Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Stanley. Welcome everybody back to Virtue's Last Award, the second game within the Normandy series. We just learned a little bit more information from Zero the Third, apparently. Zero the Third. We're stuck in a facility that I have a lot of questions about. And now we have an argument. Some little infighting, I think. If I could just get my hands on that little fucker, I'd squeeze him till he popped. That sounds gross. Oh yeah, we just recently finished doing one of our recent Ambidex rooms. We were allied with Luna. It was us, Fi, and Luna. And we allied. We decided to ally. Everybody else betrayed each other. Well, one or the other betrayed each other. But we, with Luna, we allied. In order to make sure that uh, we weren't going to betray her. I think for the most part. I'm not sure if this is going to be the ending that we're going to get. I don't think we're going to get a lot of good endings for the start. We're going to get, like external endings as I can see. This game is gonna have a lot of endings compared to the first one. A lot of endings, different endings. I think they're all gonna be like character specific endings, I believe. Maybe? I don't know yet. But there's a lot for us to explore here regarding these endings and what choices we make. And I think we're gonna have to do the same thing. Well, we have to do an ending to unlock other endings, to unlock even more endings, to unlock the true ending, to unlock the ending before the true ending, to get the attunement, and then get the final ending. I think we're gonna we're gonna have to go through a lot of endings, so it's gonna be fun. Anyway, I think for the most part, I want to try to stick with Luna for the most part, and hopefully we can uh, stick with her uh, throughout this. Let's go on through this. Uh, I don't think I want. I don't really think I want to think about it. Um. So. What happens now? We've still got a while until the chromatic doors open. Yeah, looks like about 42 minutes. And I believe, now I could be wrong, but I believe everybody's colors are now different, right? We have Cyan. I, if I remember correctly, I think Luna also had Cyan, and I think um, Alice, all eyes, had Cyan as well. So I think we're going to be pairing up with them, maybe. We'll see. We should go and see if we can find any other exits. Maybe there's a vent or a disposal chute or something. If there's a chance Zero missed something. I concur. There's no point in standing around. We lose nothing by looking. And if we find nothing, we can always return and go through the chromatic doors. Let's split up. Five minutes would give us a good half hour or so. Let's meet in front of the chromatic doors five minutes before they open then. Any objections? No objections. There were none. After some nods and mumbling, they split up and moved off to investigate. I was the only person who stayed behind. Damn. How the hell did I end up here? Why? Why me? Also, I realized that I'm beginning, I'm being slowly nailing down the pacing for the text. The text moves a lot slower. That's actually a way you could speed up the text in the original game, Nine Hours on Persons on Doors. But this time, the text moves really slow, so I gotta kind of be patient for it and let it play out before I even speak. Try as I might, I couldn't think of anything I'd done that could have landed me in Zero's game. And pissed anyone off, at least not this bad. I didn't owe anybody money, and my family certainly wasn't rich. If anyone was hoping to get a fat ransom paying, uh, payout for me, they were going to be very disappointed. Obviously I wasn't some kind of a genius, nor was I an Olympic athlete, and I certainly hadn't been chosen by God to fulfill some great purpose of his earth. Well, at least if I was, I didn't know it yet. Could be. Had I started a fight with fright had I started a fight with a frightening and mysterious new religion? No. I had a hack into some terrorist organ terrorist group server. No, sorry, I don't know why I, I want to say terrorist organization. Anyway. I had I witnessed an assassination? No. I had I gotten wasted and had a one night stand with a mistress or a prominent politician? Well, yes. But it was just the one time. And she was the one who went after me. May I mean maybe that could be it. Anyway. I was just an ordinary college student. If there was a reason I'd been abducted and put in this nonary game, I sure couldn't see it. Why was this happening to me? I thought back to what I'd been doing right before I was taken. The memories were still a little blurry, but they were there. Oh, but the, is it the kidnapping? It has to be. It gotta be, it gotta be, it gotta be. December 25th, 2028, early morning, California Desert. 
The moon was beautiful. I'd just finished writing a paper due to that day, was heading to my car from the research building. The parking lot was empty, and a bright moon cast sharp shadows across the chilly pavement. The last time I had looked at the clock, I had said it was said it was 2 in the morning, which meant that today was Christmas Day. So I was at school typing away feverishly on Christmas. There were three reasons. First, my home computer had suddenly decided to eat shit. When I hit the power button, I just got nothing. I didn't have the time to spend a long night troubleshooting at that stupid thing, so I headed back to the campus to use one of the school machines. Have you checked the plug? There's a lot of times the plug is the issue. As an IT person, I would know. <laughs> Second, a professor in charge of my research group was a Buddhist. Christmas didn't appear to have any sort of significance to him, and part of me couldn't shake the thought that he was trying to make some kind of a point. Third, my girlfriend had broken up with me a week before. I'm sorry. I don't think we could, should see each other anymore. Goodbye. All I got was that one cold email. Twice I might, I couldn't even get in touch with her. Of course, that meant I wouldn't be attending the party we've been planning on going to. Somehow, I didn't think drinking by myself around a bunch of happy couples would really be a good idea. Hmm. Can relate. I think a lot of us can relate. <laughs> At any rate, I'd stayed up all night to finish my paper and emailed it off to my professor before the sun began to rise. As I walked across the parking lot, I felt light. Perhaps it was the relief of finishing my paper, or perhaps it was the five energy drinks I chucked to stay awake. Perhaps it was both. Oh, that's it's a combination. It's a combination. I know the feeling all too well. If you've never been to college yet, have fun writing papers, just to wish you good luck. Make sure to have coffee and energy, make sure to walk around every now and then so your legs don't fall asleep and you don't have like a cholesterol buildup or something, I don't know. Stay, try to stay healthy when you're gonna be writing papers all night. I slid into my car and stuck the key into the ignition after only two tries. I twisted the key. Nothing happened. Uh huh. I jiggled the key in the slot and tried again. And again. And again. On the fifth try, the engine made an odd creaking noise, like metal on metal, and fell silent. That sounds like a battery. That sounds like a battery. I had that. I had that exact sound. Oh my God, Sigma is so relatable to me. I had that exact sound one time in my car. It was a it was a piece of shit car. Glad I didn't have it anymore. But good lord. Oh, that is the, the most depressing sound you will ever hear out of a car. God damn it! You stupid piece of shit! I screamed and pounded on the steering wheel, but nothing worked. The console was about to get a visit from my fist when... Uh huh? What? The hell is this? Why is my car smoking? I clawed at the door, and for a moment I thought that it was just my panic and lack of sleep that were keeping me from opening it. It wasn't long before I realized the truth. Shit! Open, goddammit! What was going on? My mind was racing, trying desperately to puzzle out what was happening through a haze of fear and caffeine-fueled neuron misfires. That was when I saw it. Just a glimpse in a rearview mirror. But I was certain there was someone behind my car. I spun around as fast as a very tired college student sitting in a car can. Who's there? God, that's that's such a I don't know why I'm smiling, but that's such a chilling presence to see. I noted something. I noted something from a while ago. I never even thought about this, but Zero's mask looks like a smile here. Let me point out with a cursor. I kind of love having. Keyword and mouse support and control support is so good on PC. God damn, so good. Anyway, note how you can see the eyes, right? The mask and then the tubes on the side look like a grin, look like a smile that's just forming there, like an evil grin. That is so, oh my god, that is so morbid. That's so creepy looking, but I love it. Oh. And who? Okay, this has to be somebody from the game, from the original owner game, because they're using the same exact mask and everything. What the hell? My vision started to swim as smoke filled the car. 
The Mulvert I inhaled, the heavier my body felt, and I could already feel the world starting to go dark. The last of my strength failed, and I collapsed sideways into the passenger seat. My eyes slowly drooped closed. And that's how we ended up here. And with Fi. And when they opened again, I was in the AB room with Fi. That's the origin story. So, we were a student in California, finishing up a paper. Cool, not bad. Why is this happening to me? I spent a few minutes wallowing in misery. I figured I deserved at least a little self pity. But even I knew that brooding and whining wasn't going to get me anywhere. Like Kay had said, I needed to at least try and find another way out. So I shook my head to clear it, stood up straight, and headed off. We can go to lounge, informary, and crew quarters. Let's go to the crew quarters. I've never really been there. Let's go there. I guess this is the time for us to just walk around for a little bit and talk to people, maybe. The crew quarters. Let's see what's inside here. Also makes me kind of wonder about this entire facility. Why would it have the crew quarters, the infirmary, the lounge? I mean, clearly it has some sort of purpose. It can't just be like a facility for the sake of being a facility. Right? I mean, the Titanic was just used... Mm, mm. The, gigan the Gigantic in the first game... Mm. Was used... Uh, some, of you, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Gigantic. The Gigantic. Though inside the Gigantic. And... Uh, it was used... Because... It was used as a testing for the receptors. Not the... Tr not the transposers? Transistors? The transfer ones, um, being an experiment for the nonary game, for nonary testing. So I wonder if there's a similar event happening here. It doesn't look like we're, we're ascending, it looks like, it doesn't look like we're even receiving, it looks like a bastard version of the nonary game entirely. But why these specific facilities in the first place? Uh huh. So these are the crew quarters, huh? I mean, this say even crew quarters, has an infirmary, has... Sigma. A lounge. The original Gigantic was bought for the nonary experiments because it was just a place, a convenient place you could just put out into the, into the water. It was pretty much like a building on a boat, right? And that was pretty solid for when it comes to testing it. The thing is, the thing is, the thing is, with this particular facility, it doesn't seem like it was used as a, like a, a mock-up of the nonary game testing. It seems like it was an actual facility that was used for something. I mean, it has an infirmary and everything. Which makes me wonder, how and why? What are you doing here? Hey, come on, man. Don't be like that. We aren't enemies, are we? Huh. I wonder. Oh, yeah, he saw the woman die. I'm pretty sure it's somebody he knows. What happened to you, Timmy Oji? You've been acting weird ever since we found that lady's body. Oh, you think so? But you sure it ain't just all in your head? Fine. Let's move on to something else, then. You and Quark. Is he your... uh... grandkid? Why do you want to know? Why? Well, I mean... What do you think? He keeps calling you Grandpa. Of course I'm gonna wonder what the deal is. We all got kidnapped and brought here, apparently for no reason. Now they're making us all play some sort of weird game. I'm just trying to find a little meaning in all this nonsense. That's it. So tell me, Tim Yuji. Are you really quarter grandpa? He didn't answer the question. What is this? Wait, why did he, why did he not answer the question? I, are the really grandparent? Is it really grandpa or not? What 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 is this? Good lord. It's gonna drive me up the wall. I swear, Timmy Uchi probably has something to do with this facility. He probably has everything to do with this facility, doesn't he? I'm calling it right now, I'm calling it right now. He is going to be the one of the few people that knows exactly what's going on here. One of the few. I feel like there might be two more people here. Who knows? I don't know yet. But who knows? Clover. Luna. Sigma. Where'd you come from? She now want me here? Also, Clover is here, which is driving me up the wall. Like, well, Clover, why are you here? What are you doing as part of this Nolan regime? Why are you just accepting this game as is? She's been very calm about this entire situation, to be completely honest. No. It's okay, I guess. I just thought Tenmyoji was the only other person here. This is the crew quarters. 
I came here with Clover and Tenmyoji. We decided we'd split up to investigate. Huh. Makes sense. So, you found anything? Zero. What? Which one? No, I meant I found zero things. Oh. What about you? Anything suspicious? I didn't find anything either. Although, I guess you could say this whole facility is suspicious. It is! Yeah, got a point there. So, why do you think Zero put all these puzzles and stuff all over the place? Hmm. Well, maybe solving all of these puzzles is part of the Nonary game. Really? I thought the Nonary game was a couple of rounds of AB game. Why would need to puzzle why do you need the puzzles and stuff then? Clover knows something! She is not saying anything! Look at her face! She knows something! She knows something! Clover, tell us, please! Good lord! Why? Okay, hold on. The original puzzles. Okay, if I'm correct, if I am very much correct in this situation, if I'm correct, if it's like the first game, we are testing for answers for the other party. The two parties that were in the first Nonary game, the, the people sending the information through the uh, morphogenetic fields and the other people that were receiving information from morphogenetic fields. Are we the testers? Because we're not the receivers, definitely not. We have to be the testers here. Solving these puzzles, but why solve these puzzles? This is like a bastardized version where we, bastardized version where we kill each other. She knows something. Well, what is the Nonary game then? Why is Zero making us do all this? Um, well, this is just, um, speculation, but maybe it's for entertainment, so rich, powerful people can watch. Entertainment? Yes. They're probably off in an opulent theater, watching us struggle while they drink brandy and eat caviar. Well, you think so, huh? So some rich bastards killed her off for kicks. What kind of a death is that? Well, maybe her dying didn't have anything to do with the rest of the game. No. Kay was right. If her dying wasn't part of all this, the rabbit would have said something. But what we get? Nothing. Just tells us to keep playing and disappears. I can only think of one reason he'd do that. Murdering her was always part of Zero's plans. Now, if you can think of another way all this fits, well, I'd love to hear it. So you're saying that Zero Senior is the one who murdered the old lady? Now it sure looks that way. That means there's a 7 in 1 chance anybody could be the murderer. Wait, 7? Well, Alice and I can't be Zero. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Okay. I'll let the I part go, bud. You're gonna have to give me a little to convince me Alice can be zero. What? Come on. Alice and I know each other. Well, um, how do you know each other? Uh, I guess you could say we're co-workers. And what do you co-work? An organization? That makes me think of the original Nonary game where we had two people that know each other that worked together. They were co-workers for a particular organization together in a particular experiment that they started. It was four people, but we had two of them as guests, as, part, as members of the game. Now, Clover and Alice, if you're saying that you're the same, you are in the same position as in the first game, that's highly suspicious. Highly suspicious. Highly, highly suspicious, especially since Clover and Kay voted to betray Alice. Like happened in the first game where somebody betrayed the other. I'm calling it Clover is the Clover is the Clover Zero. Clover is literally she's not zero. She's not zero, but she's gonna be the main antagonist here. That's kind of vague. What kind of organization? Um, that's... Mm-hmm. That's... I can't tell you. What? What do you mean you can't tell us? I mean, I can't tell you. Just forget about it, okay? Why can't you tell us? Because it's... confidential. 
I promised I wouldn't tell. You gotta tell something. Oh, come on, don't give me that. Look around you, Clover. You really think this is the time for playing it close to the chest? Yeah. But what if the people you work for have something to do with what's going on here? Yeah. You're right. Wait. Is that her saying, yeah, you're right, you might be, is, you might, is he, wait, is, is this her saying, yeah, you might be right, they could possibly have something to do, or is she admitting, like, yes, they are, they have something to do with this? Maybe I should tell you. Oh. <laughs> Finally. Sorry, but I just don't really trust you guys. I mean, what if one of you is Zero? I'm guessing we're gonna have to go on a route with her in order for her to gain our trust. It could be any of you. Sorry. Anyway, I think that's enough about me and Alice. I just don't really feel like I can trust you guys. Maybe if that changes, then I can tell you. So, I guess I'll go now. Go? Where are you going? I don't know. I haven't really figured it out yet. Then I'll be going too. Fine. There she goes. There she goes. There she goes again. And not tell us anything. God, Clover, why? Ah, why you gotta be so difficult again? She is the most difficult person to ever get along with. We're gonna have to start a rap with her to really figure out everything about this and her organization. I swear. If it's like the first game. Mm. <laughs> so, Temiuchi. Save it. I don't trust you any more than she does. In other words, you aren't gonna tell me anything, are you? Sorry. That was a productive conversation. Thanks, Clover. About to earn a man's trust, and nope, never mind. <sighs> I left Himioji and headed back to the hallway. There were so many questions I wanted to answer to, but it was looking like I'd have to suffer in ignorance for a while longer. Besides, there were plenty more immediate problems that need to my attention. I sighed. I found my questions away to be dealt with later. I need to focus. Lounge or infirmary? I feel like we're gonna go to infirmary. We haven't really been that much. Let's go to lounge last. 